A tendon hammer, or a reflex hammer, is a tool used by doctors and other healthcare professionals to test the deep tendon reflexes. The reason we do this is to look for problems of the central or peripheral nervous system, and many of you will be very familiar with them if you have ever had a neurological examination. To keep things really, really simple, the brain and the spinal cord are connected together down the center of the body, and we then have what we call peripheral nerves running from the center all the way down our arms and legs to supply the muscle groups within our limbs and the skin that overlies all parts of our body. And therefore, if there is a problem such as pain or weakness in one part of the body, then we can check the reflexes in the nerves that run to those areas to see if we can locate where the problem might be. The one that most people will recognize is the patella reflex in the knee. We use a tendon hammer to strike the patella tendon which connects to the patella, the raised knobbly bone that forms the lump of our knee, and the tibia, the large bone in the lower leg. This stretch in the tendon is then detected and sends a signal back to the spinal cord at the L3, L4 spinal level, and then another signal gets sent back to the leg. This returning signal then causes the quadriceps group of muscles, or the quads, to contract and tighten, and the hamstrings on the opposite side to relax. As you might imagine, these two actions taken together then cause the leg to extend or kick forwards, which is why we see someone's leg jump forward when we strike the patella tendon with our reflex hammer. But this video is not ultimately about nerves, it is about the tendon hammers themselves. And there are a few different types to know about, and different types you might come across either as a medical student, a healthcare worker, or a patient. And in the UK, the most common one that you will see looks like this. A long stick or handle by which you hold it, and then a round disc here on the end which is usually made of rubber. And this design here is called a queen square hammer. And it's called a queen square hammer, many of you might be able to guess, because it was developed in Queen Square, London, at the National National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery. And you would also notice if you were to look very, very carefully that the other end, I'm going to line it up with my nose, has a very sharpened point. And the reason it has this is we use it to check the plantar reflexes. Again, many of you may have had this done. This sharp point is dragged around the outside of the foot to try and elicit the plantar reflexes which cause your toes to curl up. Not many people like having it done. So if you ever undergo a neurological exam by a doctor in the UK, it is more than likely that a Queen's Square Hammer is what they will use. Because not only are they ubiquitous in UK medical schools, and therefore it's what we all trained with, there is some historicity and culture attached to the design. According to the records that I've been able to find, it was actually developed by a Miss Wintle, who was head nurse of physiotherapy and radiology at the National Hospital for Nervous Diseases, as it was at the time before the hospital would be renamed. And a colleague of mine actually raised to me that if this hammer were named as per the convention by which other tendon hammers are named then we should actually be calling it a wintle hammer and I think that's quite a good idea for a neurological instrument. It is by no means the only type however I've got a couple of others to show you. This is probably the second most common variety, the Taylor hammer designed by John Madison Taylor in the early 19th century. He was an American neurologist and he designed it with this sort of flattened cone shape and this was the first medical hammer designed specifically for testing neurological reflexes. And if you're an American medical student particularly, you'll know that these are sometimes called tomahawks or tomahawk hammers because of their shape. But now it's time to take a break from medical history and talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. As I'm sure you know, the best way to learn anything is by doing it yourself, hands-on. Reading from a textbook is one thing, but it's another entirely to work through a series of problems step by step, overcoming puzzles and challenges to help embed that learning, applying all of these principles you're learning in science, maths and computing. If you're here, for example, it's quite likely that you're interested in health and medicine, so why not take a look at their courses on the basics of chemical reactions or machine learning and neural networks? To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash ollieburton. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So thank you as ever to Brilliant for being brilliant by sponsoring today's video. Now the next couple of hammers I don't actually own examples of because they're quite uncommon in the UK, you would have to go out of your way to acquire one, but the next one is the Babinski hammer. And you'll notice that this one looks extremely similar to the Queen's Square hammer just with the head sat at 90 degrees. But the other major difference that you'll notice returning to our Queen's Square hammer is that it has a rigid handle. Now we're going to move to a slightly different set of designs and this next one is called a Tromner hammer. And it looks much more in keeping with what you would call a hammer, right? A handle with a 
mallet looking thing at the end. And you'll notice that it has two different heads with different sizes. It's because they're designed to do different things. The larger head is used to elicit the neurological reflexes that we've already talked about. The smaller head is actually used for eliciting something called percussion myotonia. Myotonia being extended muscle contraction in response to being tapped by the hammer. And then finally, another one that I can actually show you to finish off, this is called a buck hammer. It's a very, very similar design to the Tromner hammer with a slightly larger second head. It's quite nice and compact, so it would fit in a pocket, although you would have to put more force through it, obviously to get the same force as with the longer queen square hammer. And this particular design actually has some hidden surprises. The first one is that I can actually unscrew the base here to reveal the first hidden feature, which is a small brush. And we can use this brush to test a patient's light touch sensation, often in the different dermatomes, the areas of skin supplied by a single spinal nerve. And it also has a hidden surprise for us at the opposite end. If I again repeat the same motion, we have this small pin. Doesn't this look like a weapon, like a little assassin's tool? And again, just as with the brush, we would use this pin to test a patient's sharp sensation, because it's really important in a full neurological examination to test all of the different sensory modalities that we can, as well as hot, cold, and vibration sensation, as all of these sensations are carried by different types of nerve fibers. And obviously, just as a bit of a disclaimer there, whenever we're talking about sharps, whenever something has the possibility of breaking the skin, do not use sharps like that between patients. You should be using a single single-use, pre-packaged, sterile, neurotip, or some other equivalent instead, because this is all about reducing the risk of infection using devices, especially those that may break the skin between patients. And then just a final point to think about as we bring the video to its close, is one design better than another? Why do all of these different designs exist? Functionally speaking, albeit obviously not a neurologist, I don't think it matters a great deal, as obviously eminent and very academic neurologists from all over the world have simply used what was available to them at the time, and I'm sure that any of them would be as capable of eliciting reflexes with any of them if you were to give them one. Ultimately, you've got to be able to hit the tendon with enough force to provoke a reflex. There is some literature, however, to suggest that the Queen Square Hammer has a prolonged tap phase, as in it stays in contact longer, with the thing it's hitting because of the flexible handle, and that might make it easier to trigger reflexes. But, like I say, do your own homework, have a look at the different designs that are out there, and thank you very much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe. Are there any other parts of the doctor's toolkit that you'd like to see explained and run through, demonstrated on camera? Let me know. Take care.